just about every year you can count on a football league popping up, whether it's arena football or indoor football or semi-pro football. But as fast as they pop up, they fold even faster. I'm Tori Tolbert. Welcome to Inside Spring League Football. There are two leagues that I believe finally got it right. And that's the Spring League founded in 2016 by attorney and sports executive Brian Woods and the AAF founded by television producer Charlie Ebersol and co-founded by former NFL general manager Bill Polian. Now let's first start with the Spring League who brands itself as a professional scouting league for elite football players that either played in college, CFL, or the NFL. Now the Spring League's concept is to provide players with a second chance to develop and move on to a higher level or play at a higher level. Now it has to be said that the NFL has not had a developmental league since 2007 and that was NFL Europe. Now I attended the Spring League game this year in Austin, Texas and one thing that did stand out to me were one, there were a lot of players that still had the talent and the skill to move up to the next level or to go back to the next level. They just need to be developed a little bit more which is why the Spring League provides this platform. Some of these players were removed from any form of professional football for two to ten years. When I attended the Spring League this year, there were a lot of players there. Players that still had the skills, players that still had the youth to play in the NFL. The NFL's average age is about 26.6 years old. And there were some players that had been there or removed from football for two to ten years. But that's okay because all they needed to do was to be developed. Now the Spring League has four teams, the East, West, and the North, and the South. And there are two games per team with about 105 players total on the roster. The four games are played in one location with the exception of the championship game, which is normally played in a different location and sometimes with different players. Each game is aired by the Bleacher Report. There's still hard hitting football. There's still a lot of talented guys out there playing football. And there are coaches out there, you know, from, from the NFL, from the CFL. These guys just really need a second chance. And the Spring League definitely provides that platform for these players. One important note about the Spring League is that they don't provide the players with a stipend. However, they do pay for the players' housing. They do, play, they do pay for the meals. They have the uniforms. They pretty much have everything that the player needs uh, when he gets there. They just don't pay the players. But when you are hungry and when you really want to play football and you're trying to get to the next level or go back to the next level or even develop yourself a little more to get to that next level, see, that next level, CFL, NFL, money at that point doesn't even matter. You're just trying to get in front of the right team that can see that you still have what it takes. You still have the talent. I firmly believe that the Spring League offers that. So does the Spring League have the dynamics that it takes to catapult these players to the next level? I firmly believe so, and I believe that the Spring League has staying power. I'm Tori Tober with Inside Spring League Football. Thanks for watching.